Do you want to supercharge your Etsy sales? In order to do that, we need the right mix of awesome SEO and creative, incredible designs. If you currently feel like your designs keep looking like everybody else's and you don't know how to add something different to the market, then this video is especially for you. And if you're thinking, but Shauna, how do I do that? Then you're going to want to stick around to the end of this video because we're going to cover everything from exactly what it looks like when I am designing, how do I make the decisions that I'm making? How do I make my designs look different from what is already there? I think that's a really hard sticking point when you first get started. How do you make things look different from what's already there? You need to get the customers to stop scrolling and click on your shirt. So how do I go about doing that? I'm gonna spill the beans and show you what I do. And we're even going to go over three plug and play design formats that are known to work for t-shirt designs. Okay, so let me know down in the comments whether you like the process of finding SEO better or if you like the process of designing better. I would love to know what your thoughts are on that. Hi guys, Simply Shauna here, and I welcome you back to the channel if you're already a subscriber, and if not, we hope you'll become one today. On this channel, we talk all about making money online. Just a little over two years ago, I opened an Etsy shop and connected it with a print-on-demand company. And now I make double what I used to as a fourth grade teacher. What I've done here is completely repeatable and you can absolutely do it too. Now I really put this video together with the intention of it going with or being watched with the SEO video I recently put out. It's titled, Steal This Six figure Etsy sellers SEO strategy that works. I will go ahead and link that down in the description. And in that video, I go very in depth of what my SEO strategy look, looks like, what it looks like when I go and pull out the title and the tags. Now I always start with the research. So I go into the Etsy search engine and I type in what I'm thinking about creating. So in this case, we are creating reading shirts. Now in that video, we already did all of the SEO work and we are ready to design. So we're gonna pick up, a, we're gonna pick up in the process right there, what would it look like next? After I have collected my, come up with my niche, now I've collected my SEO and now I'm ready to design. What does that look like? How do I start making decisions from there? I have personally gone back and forth through this process of liking SEO better and then liking designs better. Right now, I currently love the designing process so much more. Once I really got the SEO kind of down to a science and this is what I'm gonna do every single time, and then I kind of came up with a system of how I could create unique designs every single time, the designing process just got more and more fun for me after that. We're gonna jump on the computer now, and this story kinda of starts where that SEO video left off. We are working on reading shirts. Here we have our SEO block on the left. Reading shirt, book lover shirt, teacher book shirt, librarian shirts, book lover gift, literary shirt, reading t-shirt, and reading teacher. On the right, I'm scrolling through the results of reading shirt in the search bar up there, and I've already actually got a bunch of tabs open of shirts that I clicked into and saw that they're bestsellers with 20s in the carts. And I just want to jot down the phrases. Read banned books. It's a good day to read a book. Now, I'm not looking to make shirts that look like the ones that I'm seeing. I, the purpose of this first search right now is to just gather some phrases that are selling really well on shirts right now. So they're obviously phrases that people are enjoying wearing. And when I'm all done with this research, I'm gonna go over to USPTO and make sure that I didn't grab any phrases that are trademarked. So here we've got one more chapter. Read, return, repeat. Now the shirts that I'm gonna wind up making, I won't even look at their designs for inspiration because I want my shirts to look different. Just one more chapter. Just 
I have no shelf control. I love the funny ones. And this last funny one here, we'll go ahead and add it to our list. I think when I first started doing this, one of the hardest things for me was when it came to designing was when I was looking at the shirts, I thought, well, this is selling well because it's that phrase and it's, it looks like that and it, the text is like that and this image, is, it's got to be that image. We do not want to make something that looks like someone else's. That's going to get us nowhere because that person will have already clicked on that other item that's already doing well, that's way up in search results. Ours is going to be way back in search results. Why would they, why would they pass that first item to get to ours? So we need something different. And it's not necessarily, yes, the, the whole design is what they're liking. They're liking the phrase and they're liking the way that it looks laid out on the shirt and they're liking the colors that are being used and they're liking other elements about those designs, but it does not have to be that exact design. So I'm gonna show you how I would take these phrases and make them very different in just a minute. And now we're gonna jump back on the computer. But before we do, if you wouldn't mind smashing the like button, if you are finding value from this video, because that would really support my little YouTube channel. Now I'm gonna go back through these same search results, but this time, instead of looking for phrases that are selling well, I'm going to look for design elements that seem to be repeated. They seem to be going well in this particular niche, the reading niche. So we're just looking, and if you see one that I don't see, or you see it before I jot it down, jot it down in the comments. Be on the lookout for some elements that we just see repeated as we're looking through the designs. I'm noticing here we have three lines of text. They're kind of muted colors. Here again, we've got three lines of text and three lines of text. I'm noticing that each line of text is a different color. And I also noticed that we had kind of a retro font in that second one we looked at. Something else to note, um, and this is for any designing and any niche that you're doing, these are all easily read. We can read them easily from this thumbnail here. In this one, they repeated the phrase. Looks like five lines of text. And each of those colors was kind of that muted, those muted soft colors. Here we have some just kind of elegant, wispy flowers. In this one, we've, it's a little bit more colorful. We're going to kind of just click around a little bit and see if we see some elements that are being repeated. I'm noticing some hearts, some large graphics with hearts. As I click through, this one has got a couple of little hearts by the graphic of the, of the books. So we can jot down hearts. We've got some watercolor images here. This has kind of got like a, a graphic, a nice big rectangular graphic with a word written under it. Here we have a large graphic with arched text above it. And I also noticed this is cross niched with a skeleton. Here we have some arched text, a nice big graphic, and some text underneath the graphic. Similar to that skeleton one, except the skeleton one didn't have any text underneath the graphic. So we've seen some designs that are just text, and we've seen some that have text in graphics. Here we've got a simple, two simple shirts that just have some white text on them. Bookmarks are for quitters. And our other one, I closed my book to be here. So just some simple white text on a couple of them. Some hearts. Some graphics and some text. 
Here we see a retro look, and as we kind of thumbed through, we've seen a couple of, of those designs with that retro font, some of them with pictures and some of them without. You don't want to add any smileys because smileys are, emojis are trademarks, so you don't want to add those. Here we have with our other retro look. This one's got a bit of a retro look as well. The retro look is definitely in. That 70s vibe is happening this year. Here we've got another one. It's a good day to read a book. And we've got some little flowers. So, and it's got that wavy text as well. So this is definitely a trending look. You, you want to, even if you don't like this look, you want to at least do some designs with this look if your goal is to make sales. Something else I like to do before I start designing is to go ahead and look at other related niches so like a more broad niche so we were just looking at reading shirts now i jumped into teacher shirts that's what i put in the search bar and i'm just going to be looking through these different results like this one we have in front of us it's got a 70s vibe it has some wavy text we've got another heart here but it's personalized this time and i'm just going to look through teacher shirts because people that would like the reading shirts that i'm going to be making a lot of those people are going to be teachers and so these, um, these designs, these design elements would probably appeal to them as well and could help me add something different to what's being, you know, used in the reading niche currently. So here I see this checkered pattern below this design and I've seen this come up many times. So that's a good one. We, I'm seeing a dinosaur here. Cross niching with something is always a great idea to get someone to stop scrolling, someone who maybe likes dinosaurs there with this one. We're also seeing those muted colors again. It's kind of a 70s font. Seeing that arched text again with the graphic and then some text underneath. I just want to stop for a second and kind of put an exclamation mark on something I mentioned earlier because it's something I do all the time and I feel like it has helps me bunches taking that reading niche and then not just looking for design elements that are in the reading niche but pulling over into another niche or a broader niche so then i looked up teacher shirts and started looking at design elements and formats in the teacher niche and now let's go do that with just women's shirts i'm going to pop that in there what are some trending things in just women's shirts? Because a lot of the people that are going to be wearing these shirts are going to be women. So maybe I can find some design elements that are, once again, that I'm seeing being repeated, so it makes me want to use them more, and or see some new things popping up that make me go, oh, well, wait a second, I, wanna, I don't see this being used in the reading niche yet, but if women are buying a lot of these shirts, then this would be a great thing to pull over into the reading niche and be one of the first people implementing that design element. Now we've got women's t-shirts in the search bar and we're gonna just take a look through those search results and see if we see some more interesting elements. This one's got like a chunky 70s look and the 70s flowers above and some cursive underneath. Oh, this is fantastic. I did not see this over in the reading niche. These little 70s characters with the eyeballs. Obviously, we wouldn't be using vegetables for ours, but we might be able to find some little books, maybe a coffee in a book and cross niche them together. Some chunky text, some big text here. Different colors for each letter. We've got some of those flowers again. We did see that. Oh, we've got some moons and some stars here. So we really didn't see this cross niched at all with the reading stuff that we looked through. So we might be able to maybe incorporate some of that. We've got some more personalized hearts. Here we've got a cactus shirt. I've seen cactus kind of pop up quite a bit. So maybe we can find a way to connect that with our reading shirts. We'll see. Here we've got another one with each line being a different color. So we've definitely got to put some designs out like that. Each letter being a different color. We've got some more flowers here. The main thing we want to do here is make our designs desirable, but different from what's already there. 
So we went ahead and we took note of all of the great selling phrases that are already selling fantastically. And we went through and we looked at design elements. Then we broadened our search and we went through and looked at design elements in just the teacher niche. And then we found some new design elements over in just women's shirts. So now I've got some great ideas for how I can bring that back over to the reading niche. But all I have right now are the phrases that are already being used, which great, let me try to make a different design, bring a different design element into one of those phrases so it's super unique and super different. But before we go to the design process, let's go see if now we can hunt out some other phrases that aren't popular on Etsy yet, but seem to go with the vibe and the feel of the things that are selling and could become popular and we could be the ones that first bring them over to the reading niche and make them popular. Here's that list of phrases we had collected earlier off of Etsy, and now I'm just researching online reading puns, and I'm looking for funny phrases that I can add to my list of possible phrases that I'm going to be designing for. So here I see one, sorry I'm booked, after a quick search of some more reading puns, we've also got check your shelf before you wreck your shelf. Talk wordy to me. I like big books and I cannot lie. Believe in your shelf. Do you want to take a shelfie? Good scribes only. Before we spend our precious time designing, let's hop on over to USPTO and I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna very quickly type each of these phrases into USPTO.gov and I'm just gonna double check to make sure that none of them are trademarked. If you're not sure how to do this, I do have a video where I go step by step of exactly what to expect and the different scenarios that you might see when you go to double check to make sure that you're not using a trademarked phrase. And I'll go ahead and I'll just put that down in the description in case you'd like to check that out. You're gonna come along with me while I jump on Creative Fabrica and we're just gonna take a quick peek at some of the beautiful artwork they have. This is always one of the first steps I do before I start designing. I jump into Creative Fabrica and I also use Canva quite a bit as far as graphics that I'm looking for. You have a link for Creative Fabrica down in the description and it is by far my most favorite tool when it comes to artwork, gathering artwork for my designs. Here we are on Creative Fabrica and they have POD or print on demand licenses. So I like to go ahead and filter by POD because with your subscription, you get access to these, to this clip art and you're allowed to put it on a shirt or a mug and sell it as long as it's not trademarked, you know, for the item that you're putting it on. Uh, this caught my eye because we did see that there was quite a few flowers in some of the designs. So this might be something I wind up downloading and using. I usually use GoDaddy Studio to do my designing. A lot of people like Canva as well. So I can download these images and then get them right into my GoDaddy and use them in my designs. They also have fonts. So this is kind of a fun, a fun font here. Catching my eye with the flower stuff. Now I typed in the word books and I have checked off illustrations so it'll show me book illustrations and I'm just going to kind of take it in. I'm looking at these, some of them are bundles so you'll get, you know, the entire, all of that artwork when you download it and others are just a single image. When you get the subscription, you can download as many of these as you want. It's limitless. And so I'm gonna spend a few minutes here and I'm just gonna collect, oh, I see skeleton there. See some dragons. Oh, I see an open book with flowers, except it's colorful, which is kind of fun because the one we saw on Etsy that's selling well right now doesn't have any color. So that might be a fun addition. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes. It's easy to get lost in this, so you have to, I, I always have to get myself back on task. Um, Oh, I see 
some cats there. I might be able to cross niche. So I'm just kind of got all of, I've just kind of got all of these things kind of floating in my head as I look through these. And this is something I'll probably come back to while I'm, while I'm designing as well and pull clip art as needed. Now for the fun part. We've done all the hard stuff. We've done our research. Research will help us get sales. So we have researched great selling phrases. We have researched elements that are trending, like things, design elements that we are seeing in lots of bestsellers, whether it be in the reading niche or just in women's shirts in general. And we are going to now try to make something different and unique to add to that reading niche market by using some of those design elements that we're seeing in maybe the women's niche and by also adding some new phrases to already the ones that we see are, are selling well. So now I'm gonna take this, this process over and, and I'm gonna start the designing. If you are interested in a tutorial of how I use GoDaddy Studio, um, just drop me a note in the comments so I know that that's something that you'd be interested in having a tutorial about. And then after I come up with these designs, one of the reasons it's gonna be so, ha so easy for me is because I also have in mind some plug and play formats that I can use and I'm also going to share those with you. If you're looking for some more design videos, one of the people I have watched throughout this process is Detour Shirts. So you might wanna check him out, he's here on YouTube. Lots of design tips for you. The first design format we're gonna design with here is an arched text on top, a graphic in the middle, and then text on the bottom. So here we have this um, open book with the flowers coming out and we've got the little kitty cat. And so this design was inspired by some of the designs we saw and I just kind of mixed it up with the, you know, cross niched it with the cat. So I changed the wording a little bit to some of the phrases we saw that were selling well and I changed it to, it's the perfect day to read a book. And that was inspired by, you know, our open book there with one more chapter. And this time, we, you know, we've still got the flowers, it's colorful this time, and then we've got the element of the cat there. So another design format that we can use is a, a large graphic with text underneath. And here we're still inspired by that original design. I actually found the same artwork that they placed on their shirt. Um, and I deleted or, or masked out their flowers, the flowers. That was right on Creative Fabrica, that, that artwork there is right on Creative Fabrica. Remember, I, am, I have zero interest in creating a design that looks the same as someone else's. I have absolutely zero interest in doing that. That is not a way to, to make sales. I want to be the shop making as many sales as this shop here that listed this shirt. They have over 100,000 sales. Um, you're not going to be able to be a trendsetter and be the person that's making those kind of sales if your designs are looking like theirs. So they grabbed that off of Creative Fabrica. They were probably one of the first ones to do it. They added you know, some text underneath. I have zero desire to use the same graphic even if I'm changing the text. I would just rather go a different route. So here I have the, the book, the open book. I masked out their, you know, the same flowers that were there. And I decided to kind of cross niche it with that celestial look with the, you know, the, the star and the moon vibe there. And I just put a different, a different phrase underneath, read, return, repeat. And sticking to the same format with the large graphic and text underneath, uh, this one is inspired by the read band books phrase that we saw um, and also inspired by the, the fact that we saw a lot of elements of flowers coming through in a lot of the listings and and you know in this one listing that we had here that's what I do I read books and I know things they had the arch text they had the large graphic and they had text underneath but they had that tower of books there so i was kind of vibing that when i saw this graphic and i said okay well here we've got you know some watercolors which i saw 
in another listing. We've got the element of flowers. We've got the stacked books. We've got the large graphic. So those, that was kind of inspired there, but looks very different from anything else we saw. Here we have another graphic, a large graphic text underneath, and that was kind of inspired by, by this listing here. We've got the, the, you know, kind of fun colors with the books there, and then that was one of those fun phrases that we found on, on Google with just some funny puns, believe in your shelves. Uh, sticking with the same big graphic text underneath, talk wordy to me. Just another funny pun. Super quick to put together there. Okay, another type of format we can go with is text, graphic, and then we can write um, text underneath. It could be one line or it can be two lines, but the, the basic concept here is text, graphic, text. And so here I was really excited to do this one. I really had to to um, mess around with this little book guy. I was unable to find uh, the checkerboard, the, you know, the checker pattern there that we pulled from another listing that we saw was, was, um, was popular. And we have the little book guy there that we know is popular. We, we got it from our Eat Your, Eat Your Veggies listing, kind of put us onto that, that vibe of having the little character with the eyeballs. Super popular, super fun, super cute. And I found this graphic on Creative Fabrica, but it had different wording to it. So I had to mask out the parts I didn't want so I could use the parts that I did want. And I do this all the time. I have Creative Fabrica linked down in the description and you can always try them out. They are, I think they're fantastic. I use a lot of my graphics from them. And just to be clear, when I say I use a lot of my graphics from them, I use a lot of the elements from the graphics from Creative Fabrica. You don't want to, you know, kind of do it the lazy way where you're just downloading a lot of images from Creative Fabrica and using completely as is. That is going to be something, well, quite honestly, that lots of people are going to do because it's easy. And so lots of people are just going to download the images just like that and they're going to put them up for sale. So you're gonna wind up with something that looks a lot like everybody else's. You really wanna avoid that. You wanna put a little more time and energy into your listings than that so that you can actually you know, grab some traction and, and get somewhere. You've gotta disrupt the market. You've gotta give the market something different so you can start getting some sales. And here's one more that was inspired by that, that veggies one with our little book guy and his, and his eyeballs. And I also was bringing in the element of the heart here since we saw a lot of that repeated element in some of the designs we looked at. Back to our next attempt to disrupt the market. So we're gonna do another text graphic text design. And I thought I was pretty funny with this. Um, we're gonna do a version of I'm with the band. And I thought I was too funny grabbing this little book guy and you know, I, I, I replicated him or duplicated him and put some little instruments in his hands. And so now we got kind of a double play on the word band there, which was the intention of that phrase to begin with. So I thought it was super funny. And I just want to take a second to encourage you to not be afraid to fail. I used to be afraid to list things that I was going out on a limb with like this. And now I list stuff like this all day and every day. Like this is my favorite kind of stuff to list because yes, 90% of the time I'm falling on my face and I'm never going to sell it. But that 10% of the time that I actually strike, you know, a home run there and I've got something unique, something different and people like it and, and it takes off because it was different. And, and then there we go. So, um, you know, one of my favorite things that I've heard said throughout this process, someone said, the people that succeed are the ones that, that basically fail the most. They've got the most failures behind them. And so just don't be afraid to take a swing at the bat and fail. You, your attempts will get better and better. And so what? You don't sell that one. And, but you practice the skill of adding something different to the market. And that's really what it's all about here. So these last two I have for you don't really follow, you know, one of these design formats that I went over, but I wanted to include them because I have some personalization here 
They were inspired by all of these open book designs that are popular, all these hearts that we saw popping up that were popular. And so I just wanted to add a personalization option here. And I have these two here with the teacher's name, one inside the heart and one um, incorporated into the heart. And I will continue to, does, now that I've done all this research, there's lots of ideas that that we touched on, that we jotted down, that I have not yet designed in. So I'm gonna be designing in this space for the next three or four weeks, along with some other places that I regularly design in. But I'm not gonna waste all this research that I did. Now I'm like moving and grooving with these designs, and this will be a weekly part of my routine that I'll probably come up with 10 of these reading designs for the next couple of weeks every week. Thanks so much for staying to the end, guys. I do hope you found a lot of value in this. This is one of the things I think I struggled with the most um, for many months in the beginning when I first opened my shop as my designs were looking way too much like other people's designs. This is now how I design every single time that I start designing. So I hope you found a lot of value from it. If you want to go back and watch that SEO video where I take the time to go through and find the chunk of phrases that I use in my title and in my tags, I'll go ahead and link it here. And if you're still here, you're probably waiting for that tip from Tucker. So Tucker, take it away.